know a lot about what causes thunderstorms to start you know, producing rainfall during the day, but we don't know as much about how that happens at night. So that's what we're trying to figure out because it's different. what we call MCS missions are us trying to launch balloons near thunderstorms that have already formed and organized a lot and are already producing heavy rainfall and lightning and potentially damaging winds. A lot of times what happens in, in meteorology is you know we sort of have these broad understanding of what's happening and the fine scale details are really what comes into the predictability of severity or formation or longevity. Those are still a lot of what we're trying to understand. There's a lot of questions that we have remaining because instabilities that are near the surface during the daytime aren't really there during the nighttime. So how those are sustained overnight and support systems is a big question Pecan's working on answering. The typical mechanism in the afternoon is sun's out, it's heating up the ground, there's moisture, some source of lift in the atmosphere, and those ingredients come together and, and storms will form. And the kind of obvious source for the energy is the heating up of the ground. At night, of course, that isn't there anymore. The ground's actually cooling and getting more stable. But what can happen at night is the combination of this low-level jet, these strong winds up above the surface that are bringing in warm, moist air, and a variety of other processes that we're really trying to understand in this experiment. One of the simplest things to understand about severe weather or thunderstorms is they're there for a reason, and tornadoes are there for a reason. You know, the atmosphere gets out of balance, it's too warm down below, too cold aloft, and so a thunderstorm quickly takes warm air up, and it also brings cold air down. So now you've got the atmosphere bringing itself into balance. The more out of balance, the quicker way to do the transfer is through thunderstorms. Being able to get more observations, being able to get a better understanding of what type of environment really does let these severe winds get to the surface when a forecaster has a type of information. So when the forecaster sees a certain environmental profile or sees maybe a certain structure on the radar, we'll have filled in that understanding of why that structure is occurring or why that environment might be more conducive for winds getting to the surface as opposed to a different type of environment.